Then what? Go play pigeons. Go play pigeons. Potatoes, talo? Yeah. Go on na mga potato na. Ibuta lang ko siya ng mga po. Go on ko siya. Go on ba? More chicken nuggets. Baby, these aren't going to be chicken nuggets. These are going to be the most delicious chicken that you've ever tasted in your entire life, baby. Okay. They're not chicken nuggets. Sardines is the best. I can make fried rice. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks, this is the makings, the beginning of some Panda Express orange chicken. We got the beautiful wife number one in here, chopping up garlic and ginger. And I may throw one onion in there in the breading of the chicken just to spice it up. I'm not sure. But we've got a little teamwork going on. These ladies are chewing up some uh, sardines. Of course, she's trying to get somebody to open up the Coke bottle. Maybe open that bottle for that boy. Don't use your teeth, boy. Oh, he got it. <laughs> His mama, these ladies will use their teeth to open pretty much everything. Good job, son. Hey man, just gonna leave that mess in the floor? What you doing over there, fat man? Yeah, because those red onions are 400 pesos a kilo now. I mean, onions are like just the same price as pork steak. They're missing because they're 400 pesos a kilo. I can get two chickens for what I can get. One kilo of onions, my goodness. So folks, early on, I'm gonna show you some of the ingredients. Uh, white vinegar, white sugar, let's see, I'm gonna put black pepper, I think it calls for white pepper. Oh, I got both. I got white pepper and black pepper. I got, uh, uh, this is supposed to be orange juice, but they didn't have any orange juice. I said, you know what, I'll go with pineapple orange juice and maybe it'll be even more delicious. Can't cook without drinking, my friends. You gotta be sipping on a wine, sipping on a beer, sipping on something. So that's what I'm gonna be sipping on. There you go, Chardonnay. 2020. Oh, oh, mm, good year. Trash removal duty. Good job, Fatima. The door's, the door's a little complicated, baby. There you go. A little teamwork going on here. And I have observed that you ladies are both wearing white shorts today. Good job. 
Maybe you can use my coconut chopper if you want. You need a coconut chopper? Good job, Fatima. Maybe this is the most work you've done in uh, I don't know how long. Uh, can we try to focus on some English conversation? Our train said. <laughs> What'd she say? <laughs> she. Uh, yeah. she her dressy. The secret? Here in the kitchen. I don't think that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Nose bleep. <laughs> Our shine said what? She wearing dress her in the kitchen and also the house. He wearing also high heels. Okay, that's a great idea. <laughs> so baby, do you do you have a dress? No. A nice dinner dress? No dress. But she didn't have. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I can take you to see my friend Elvie. She's a great dressmaker. She also makes custom bikinis. You remember Elvie, right? This is sponsor. No. Sponsor dress. Baby, I'm going to sponsor a dress as long as you wear it during the cooking show. Yeah. Yeah. Here? Yeah. I'm <laughs> wearing dress now, dear. I like it. I'm going to sponsor. She needs a dress and a high heel while she's chopping up that ginger. <laughs> yeah, I'll put my suit on. There you go, Miss Miss Philippines uh, in a cooking show. <laughs> Folks, like I said, one of the most important things about the cooking show is uh, socializing, the drinking, having a good time. Uh, and I'm going to drink this Chardonnay, i just show you. But you know, I'm used to, when I buy a bottle of wine, it's just got a screw off. Oh, this does have a screw off cap. Whew. I hate, well, I don't hate anything, but forks are a pain in the butt. They really are. It's so much easier to go like this. Now, honestly, I'd rather have a bottle of wine with a cork in it because I mean it's better quality, right? But this is much easier. Mmm. Chardonnay. 2020. From the French Alps. No, French cellars. I gotta get some wine glasses. I don't have any wine glasses for me and the ladies to feel like uh, we're on the lifestyles of the rich and famous instead of the broke and infamous. Ladies. Why don't we have some wine glasses? Hey, I heard the word barato. <laughs> 5,000. I need 5,000. 5,000 alone? Yeah. I don't know. All I heard was the word barato. <laughs> In Tagalog, barato means very rich man. <laughs> so sometimes they call me, they say something about being barato. That means I'm very, very generous. Oh. Isn't that right, baby? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 
to get a better angle on the day. I'm trying to shoot over there into the light. I'm seeing my zebras go crazy. You know, not the zebras that are on the center and getting clean, but zebras that show you that you're overexposed. So right now, I'm not seeing any zebras. But before, when I was pointing uh, into the lights. Take it fast. Yes. What? Take the bus. No more rice. No more Thank rice. Us. Uh, noted. Moving right along. I'm not seeing any zebras, so I don't think I'm overexposed. Uh, my focus in here. Oh yeah, I got the block on the eye now. Oh, shooting on a new camera system. Sony FX3. Bad to the bone. But it's not a beginner camera. Let me be honest with you, okay? Camera talk for just a second in the middle of this photo show. Start a YouTube channel. Pull your phone out. Record on your phone, edit on your phone, and iMovie, and, and start out like that, right? Had I bought this FX3 or something similar 10 years ago, uh, I don't even know how to turn the thing on. It was a gradual step for a pirate looking at 50, I'm a pirate looking at 50 right now. Uh, about, you know, cinematography. So I'm just now getting used to this camera, I'm just learning this camera. It took me years to learn that old Sony FDR AX100. I mastered that. Now it's time to master a more technical piece of equipment and elevate my filmmaking status. In five years, maybe I buy an Ari Alexa and then go from there. You know what I mean? I'm a pirate looking at 50. What do I got? 20, 20 good years left? Anyhow. So now I have a beautiful lady in the background. I think that I'm in focus, but the camera's way over there, and like I said, still learning. Anyhow, we're gonna make orange chicken, Panda Express orange chicken. And what I'm gonna do is stop the camera, make sure I got all my ingredients. Ooh, I got zebras on this because it's reflecting and it's overexposed. Ooh, the zebras. I'm gonna hold it over here. Anyhow. You can't see the zebras, but I can see the zebras on my screen over there. All right, folks, we're just we're just working on an ingredient list here. You got a big oil. long. Let's see, where's Shell the oil? Flakes. See? Yeah, got the yeah. garlic. Got, got garlic here. It's ginger. Ginger. Oh yeah. Sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got the yeah, white the sugar. Where's the brown sugar? Brown sugar. Brown sugar. What we get else, baby? It's three orange, that's uh, pineapple. I was gonna go with oranges, pineapple but orange. I'm too lazy to walk. I'm too lazy to walk to the corner and get some oranges. So I'm just going with the pineapple orange juice. It's gonna change the flavor a bit. But let me just ask the lady, do you like pineapple? Yeah. You like pineapple? Okay, as long as they like pineapple, it, it's gonna be an orange chicken. It's like a panda in the tropics. We're just adding that pineapple in there. It's okay. What else we got, Dawn? White tall vinegar. All right, so we got a little white vinegar. Yeah. What else? Uh, soy sauce. Got the soy sauce. And water and cornstarch. Got the cornstarch. Yeah. Sesame oil. Got the sesame oil right there. Mm. Yeah. Oyster sauce. You got the oyster yeah. sauce. Smoothie. Now, the recipe is not calling for oyster sauce, but I love putting oyster sauce in a lot of things. The oyster sauce from Thailand is just absolutely delicious. I'm not saying the oyster sauce here is not, but there's a huge difference between oyster sauce made in the Philippines versus stuff you can get from Thailand. If you can, get the oyster sauce from Thailand. It's just, it's just totally different. I prefer it and I'm a little biased because Thailand is my home and I'm used to that type of oyster sauce. But in my opinion, it is much better on the flavor, and I put it in a lot of dishes. So, um, other than that, we're going by the recipe that was on a YouTube video that the guy at Panda Express did. It's pretty much exact match copycat. Now, I didn't get the, the onion, uh, the green onions, eh, no big deal. But that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just change it up a bit, so without further ado, you ready? Get this party started. Let's do it. Yes. 
All right, folks, we're kicking this off. Got the chicken thawed out. Beautiful ladies over here are chopping it up. You know, just chopping it up into, uh, you know, chicken nugget size. Don't want them too thick. Don't have to cook them too long or I'll burn the breading. So the beautiful, beautiful R shine is going to work on this chicken. And we got a bunch of it. All right, folks, while well, the uh, beautiful lady over there is cutting up the chicken, we're gonna start out with three cups of flour. Now, I don't have a scientific cup, measuring cup, but I do have a cup. Three cups of flour, one cup of cornstarch, as long as you keep the ratios the same, who cares if it's right on the money, right? So I'm gonna use this cup. We got some uh, gold metal, all-purpose flour. We were able to find self-rising flour once, but since then we haven't been able to find gold metal uh, self-rising. Best you can get is all purpose. Now, I didn't conduct a nationwide search. It's just when I go to SNR, do they have it? No. At least I ain't seen it. All right, so I'm gonna fill this up. Three cups of this, I'll put in the bowl, one cup of cornstarch. Too easy. Okay, folks, so let me just run you down the ingredients here. What we're going to start out with the batter for the chicken. We got three cups of flour, one cup of cornstarch, and I've got a spoonful of white pepper, I've got black pepper, and I've got salt. Now, the recipe calls for a teaspoon, tablespoons, but to be honest, I don't know the difference between a teaspoon and a tablespoon. I don't, I don't know. All right, but it's a three to one ratio according to the recipe on the flour versus the cornstarch. So what I'm gonna do is ask the beautiful uh, supermodel here to go ahead and mix our dry ingredients into the bowl and sift those around. So yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and add the flour. So in goes three cups of flour. And now in goes uh, one cup of cornstarch. So there you go, cornstarch going in there. And now she's gonna add the spoonful of, the, uh, looks like, is that white pepper and salt going in there? Yeah. Go right ahead. And salt. There you go. And there's, I, it didn't call for the black pepper, but I added it. Yeah, drop that in there, girl. Yeah. Well, you're making fried chicken, it's just salt and pepper, right? Now the recipe is 1.5 cups of water. And again, we're not using a scientific unit of measurement, but we're keeping the ratios correct. So in goes one cup of water. Once she gets it ready, there you go. And then she needs to add a half a cup. Yeah, do a half a cup and that'll be per the recipe. Now, obviously we made it to tweak it with a little bit of water or a little bit of flour get it to the right consistency watch this beautiful lady stir this up and she'll get that thing stirred up and see what we got to do but basically that's our batter nothing nothing too complicated out of the ordinary if i had to put it to you in simple terms step one double fry some boneless chicken oh yeah she got to add one egg so we're gonna throw one egg up in there but this is a big long uh, to do to basically tell you, you need some double fried chicken nuggets. There you go. Anybody who's looking for brevity and simplicity. And that's what we're doing. So this is, this is step one here. We got more chicken than the recipe called for. So we're definitely gonna have to add some water because basically we're making dough. So I'd say girl, add one more cup of water to that mix. One more? Yeah. It's gotta be runny. It's gotta be like, uh, I don't know. We're not making, one more yeah, put one more cup of water. I've been drinking a little bit of wine. Maybe I got my ratios on that recipe off. But that right there looks like we're making dough. We're not making dough. We're making All right, folks, so we, we added uh, probably another cup, cup and a half of water. Uh, yeah, I think that'll work, huh? Now it does call for two spoonfuls of oil. 
Uh, I don't think that's necessary, but maybe we should follow the recipe. Again, I never follow recipes. I just go with what, what my, my gut feeling tells me to do. All right, folks, now the beautiful lady is gonna go ahead and uh, open up the window for ventilation. That's a large 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. And folks, that piece of cooking gear right there, made in America by the good folks down in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, my friends. There's a the chicken right there. Now I'm showing zebras on the bowl, so I might be a little overexposed. Listen, more camera talk. Man. Loving this new FX3, folks. Just getting used to it. But there you go right there. That's the uh, the combo cooker. And then the lid is over here, which will make the sauce in that. If all goes well. And folks, uh, like I said, you really want to see how to fry chicken? I I'll show you some clips, but I think uh, spending 20 minutes on how to fry chicken, maybe that's uh, unreasonable. But we'll show you how to make the batter. Now we're gonna double fry it. What's that mean, double fry it? You drop it in there for a little bit, fry it, take it out, shake it, you know, let it, let it rest for a minute, put it back in there, and that's what makes it crispy, I reckon. We want it crispy because I'm gonna soak it in that orange sauce and then it'll start getting soft again, right? So you wanna keep it a little crispy. We're gonna double fry it. Now she's probably never double fried anything. Uh, Maybe she has, but prob probably not. You're like, why are you frying it two times? But that's what we're gonna do. So, double fry this fried chicken, and I got a good suspicion that they're gonna be smelling that in there, and wife number two is gonna come in here trying to, trying to get some of this chicken, but I'm not gonna let her get it because you got to add the sauce. I'm not making fried chicken tonight. I'm making Panda Express, but better. I think I'll call this dish Tropical Panda. What y'all think? Good patent that shit. Instead of orange chicken, Tropical Panda. Coming to you from my kitchen. My cooking show. Gordon Ramsay don't know shit about this. Gordon don't know nothing about a Tropical Panda. Nothing. Folks, she's ready to rock. She ain't messing around. So she's gonna go ahead and drop them in the fryer. And I told her we're gonna double fry it, so we got this little uh, dog bowl standing by with the uh, uh, what do you call that? Where you put the noodles in and the water runs out. We're gonna just stuff it in there, let the let the oil drip down, and then we will double fry it. See if I can't get the right angle on the dangle. Folks, again shooting on the Sony FX3. 4K 30. Um, I got a 35 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens on here. Still trying to get used to it, all the tweaks and how to run this here piece of complicated machinery. Chicken ain't. Don't be nibbling over there. It's all right, baby. I encourage that type of activity. Ah, you put a pretty bow in your hair. That's crispy enough. It don't need to be double fried. But we'll take it out and just let her continue to cook and we'll evaluate it. Like I said, I never follow recipes. I just follow my heart. Follow my instinct. My intuition. My intuition as a chef. This is the making of the best tropical panda chicken. Well, this is the first tropical panda chicken ever made.
folks, I'm shooting on this FX3. So just a note to myself. I'm using the base ISOs of either 800 or 12,800, right? So I had it on a 800, and what it was doing, it was dropping down to 1.4. And when you drop it down to that shallow depth of field, that focus is a little finicky. So what I've done now is I've jacked it up to 12,800 on the ISO, added a little bit of ND, and so now the iris is about a 4.0 and uh, the focus is more stable. But when you get down to that shallow depth of field at a 1.4, it's a very finicky focus system because the depth of field is so shallow. Now, I'm not a professional photographer or videographer, but that's just what I've learned, what I'm learning. Now I got a question for you. Has Fatima been in here trying to eat some of the chicken? Yeah? yeah. Just don't let her eat it, okay? Yeah. Or she'll eat all the chicken before we get it finished. Folks, we got a rat. We got a thief. She came in here, act like she was looking. Show them what you grabbed off the <laughs> off the stove. Let me She grabbed it before I could stop her. She tried to run out. I said, look, if you're gonna steal the food, at least let me get a, a, a good opinion of how the food is. Is it crunch is it crispy? Yeah, it's crispy inside. How's it taste? <laughs> Baby, is it good, no good, or delicious? Okay, but listen, I'm not making fried chicken. The point is I'm making tropical panda. Son, don't drink my wine man. It looks like she's going to town on it. Is that masala? <laughs> the ladies are reporting that that is absolutely delicious, as is. And so I said, you know what? I'll make you a deal. I will keep half of it, just as plain fried chicken. And I'm gonna have to cook in the in the the lodge. The, the lid's not big enough. I got I got too much uh, sauce to make too much chicken. I'm gonna 50-50 it with them. That way, for some reason, they don't like the uh, orange chicken. They can just eat the fried chicken, add some soy sauce, whatever they're gonna do. Here's my ingredients. I got them pre-staged, and what I'm about to do is put this camera on a tripod and go to work because everybody's hungry. It's stress on Monday here. Oh my gosh. What can I do? Come on, fire it up with a little sesame oil. Boom, my this right there. Is that heated up? Oh, yeah. First things first on this. Look at there. We're going in with the with the. Uh, now I added the onion. That's not in the recipe, but I added it. onion, chili flakes, garlic, and ginger. Ginger. Let's do it. Let's do it. Look at that right there. Oh, that smell coming off of there. Give me a little bit of more oil over there. I need a little bit of oil. This thing is hot. Well, you can't go wrong with sesame. I need a little bit more. A little bit more on that sesame. My goodness. So there we go. What we're going to do, saute these ingredients here just to unlock them flavors. That's the, the orange pineapple juice. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Now this right here is truly from an orange, so I'm gonna add that too. Coming in there with the soy sauce. Here's the vinegar. I don't like vinegar, so it said full cup. Well, not really, but I did half of what they said because I don't like vinegar. All right, folks, now I got this up to a rolling boil. I don't really need it at a rolling boil. I gotta turn the heat down a little bit. 
Turn the heat down, I'm going to add one more orange juice. My beautiful assistant is giving me one more orange juice because it's supposed to be orange chicken. Let me get one more orange juice in there. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add my sugar. Boom, shakalaka. Oyster sauce. Yeah, that's gonna have a nice flavor. Take that water and that cornstarch. Take that slurry. Maybe that's not enough cornstarch. We're gonna find out. A little bit more orange juice. It's just too uh, too soy sauce. It's supposed to be orange. Tropical. Tropical pan. Thicken this up. Boom! Shaka laka laka. Alright folks, need more cornstarch. More cowbell. All right, so here's a moment of truth. I'm about to start dropping chicken in here. Oh, that's crispy. Boom, boom, get in the pool. Get into the swimming pool. Get into the swimming pool. We got room for plenty. Look at this chicken. Oh my Lord. Folks, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, you don't know shit about this. My gosh, I'm a culinary genius. Mmm. My goodness, my goodness. Look at that. Look at that right there. Wow. I think it's more of a General Cho's chicken, but I'm still calling it Tropical Panda. Oh yeah, look at that. It's yummy? Yeah. I got one yummy, two yummies. What about you, Fatima? Mm. Mom, you want more rice? No, thanks. All right, baby, me and you cook for hours. Spicy. Yeah, a little bit of spice, not too much. I want to say thanks for joining us on this little cooking show. I think my tropical panda chicken turned out to be General Cho's chicken. Maybe I'll call it the Tropical General. I don't know. But hey, thanks for joining me on my cooking show. See y'all in the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Y'all know what to do. I'm trying to get to 8.2 million subscribers in the next three minutes. Crazier things have happened. Alright, peace out my friends and Merry Christmas.